Hey folks, quick disclaimer about Greasy Says, my new show about being a game developer for 15 years who's brown. Okay, Greasy Says contains explicit language, adult situations, and viewer discretion is strongly advised. Right? Greasy Says is supposed to be a comedic take on what it's like to be in the gaming industry from my perspective, but I'm not out here trying to make people feel uncomfortable just for the sake of it. So, to sum it up, I have a potty mouth. Don't let your kids listen to this shit. And kings and queens above 18 only. Let's try that. All right. Lay is. Haha, <laughs> let's get this party started. Tied up with the professional. Easy says. Fuck is going on the fuck is going on my greasy people the fuck is going on my greasy people what the fuck is going on my greasy what the fuck is going on y'all it's greasy says season two. two welcome back one and all it's been such a long time since i've graced this microphone i missed y'all did y'all miss me I've had a great time on break, but you know, to be honest, I've been dying to get back to Greasy Says. Greasy Says, it's my show about being a brown game developer for 15 years. Last season, we had a great time. We talked about all kinds of things. This season, I'm hoping to make even better. So let's kick this thing off right and bring you all up to speed with what's been going on with me. All right, let's be real. Y'all ever heard of, uh, the norovirus? Oh, no. Mm Mm-hmm. Back in season one, I don't know what episode it was, but it was near the end of the season. I told y'all that if you choose to procreate, if you choose to have a little one, expect to be sick for the rest of your goddamn life. I wasn't lying. I wasn't lying when I said that shit. I meant every word. And once again, it rings true in 2022. You know what? Let me start from the beginning. One night, me and my wife are put my, my son to bed. He's groovy. He's laying down. We chilling. We about to throw on some shit, watch some shit. You know what I mean? As you do as parents. That's all you do as parents is just fucking raise a kid and watch TV and eat and sleep and start over again. That's all you do, right? For, for at least for a while, as far as I could tell. That's all you do. So we reached the end of the one cycle. So it's TV watching time, right? So we sit on and watch TV. And all of a sudden, the monitor comes on. Like a horror movie. And we hear our son go... <coughs> and we're like, that's weird. And we hear our son go... <coughs> You say, wow, he must be having a really bad time with this cough. What the fuck is this? And all of a sudden, we hear him go, Hua! So we run up the stairs. Do, 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 do. We run up the stairs. Like, yo, if you're squeamish out there, don't listen to this part. If you're squeamish, just stop. Skip ahead like 30 seconds, maybe a minute. I don't know how long I might be talking about this shit. It's going to be longer than a minute. But we pop in the room because we ain't trying to traumatize little dude. I'm busting the room with my, like, you know, fear in our hearts. And fuck his little brain up, right? So we come in the room and we like, oh, are you okay? And then I look down and to my horror, the entire mattress is covered in what used to be inside my son. <laughs> the grossest shit ever that I've ever seen. It's gross. Very, very gross. He's, he's sitting up in his bed. He's like, what the fuck just happened? He don't know what's going on. He don't know whether to cry, whether to, to recoil where to jump up jump out the crib you don't know what to do he's just like what the fuck just happened to me what is going on here so you know it's like eight o'clock at night so boom you know i pops pops always gotta step up you know as pops do so i go in there with the fucking paper towels and i got the gloves on and i'm cleaning the shit up and i got the 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 sheet and i gotta put that in the wash and all this shit while my wife is sitting there helping him feel better or whatever Set all that up, clean up, wipe down everything, put a new sheet on, boom, boom, boom. He's doing all right. All right, cool. You know, put him back down in the crib. 
go back downstairs, back to the TV routine, right? Because that's what you do. Ten minutes later, uh, uh, what? Uh, 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 crying. We like, what the fuck? Go upstairs. Yo, you good, little man? Little man's like, nah, son. I ain't doing so good. Get me the fuck out this crib. Boom. So I'm back in on Papa duty. Clean the shit up. Swap the fucking sheets. Pum, pum, pum. Put them downstairs. Putting them in the wash. Cradle, cradle. Rock and rock a bye, baby. All this shit. Put a new sheet on. We on the third set. We ain't got a lot of sheets. I ain't have it like that. We don't have sheets out the ying. So my sheets are limited. So we on the last set of sheets at this point. Shit still running in the, in the fucking washing machine, all right? Turns out, from then on, every 15 minutes, my little man is wretched. My little man, every few minutes, is like, huh, he, huh, huh, ha, you know? Making fucking DMX noises and shit. Feeling bad for little man. Long story short, we had to go to the fucking ER because the little man wouldn't stop. And y'all know if y'all parents out there, y'all know how it go. Once they have a certain amount of time pass, the little dude don't stop retching. It's dangerous. He might get dehydrated. He might dry up like a fucking California raisin. You know what I'm saying? So we spend the whole night up in the ER wide awake. You know what I'm saying? Waiting for him to fucking suck down a popsicle and keep it down. All right. That's parenting, right? Boring. Whatever. Who cares? Get him back. So, you know, a few days later, I'm like, okay. I mean, I'm back at work, doing my thing, come, you know, crushing it, doing my thing at work. End of the day comes around. You know what I mean? It's the last 10 minutes of the day. I'm like finishing this task. I figured out this problem I've been trying to figure out all week. I'm like, oh, yes, accomplishments. I'm feeling success right now. Then I feel a little in my belly. My belly just did a little, little turn. I was like, that's weird. I never really felt that before. What's that about? Ah, it's probably none. I'm probably just hungry. Let me go downstairs and have some food. Go downstairs and have myself this delicious mix of rice and, and, and Vietnamese chicken. Beautiful. They call it the clay pot. The shit is magnificent. It's like a honey, tangy, spicy, glazed chicken over a bed of rice with, with shredded vegetables. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a great meal. One of my favorite meals, personally. Had that feeling good. And I'm like, 30 minutes later, I'm like, you know, I'm starting to feel kind of weird. And that little <laughs> in my stomach start happening a little more often. I'm saying to myself, damn, what the fuck is going on? Uh -oh. And that was it, y'all. That was it. For the rest of the night, I was worshiping the porcelain god, yo. For the rest of the night, every 15 fucking minutes, I was yelling out the capitals of states and shit. Albuquerque. Strike one. Dallas. Strike two. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Fort Lauderdale. Oh, for three. You are not good at this. But you know, I'm not good with capitals, but you no, get what I'm you saying? Are not. I was, I was, I was chant, I was spitting bars at the toilet, okay? Bars upon bars. I never felt this sick in my whole fucking life, y'all. In my life. I've been sick before in a lot of different ways. I party a lot. In, in my younger days, I partied a lot. I've been down the road of, of worshiping the, the porcelain behemoth. But I ain't never worshiped that motherfucker like this before. This shit was horrible. I never want to experience that shit again. And it, it happened for like a night straight where it's just me running back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Coming out both ends. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be graphic, but that's how it was. So that, that, was my, that, was, that was my experience. It was fucking terrible. And like the whole time I'm thinking in the back of my head, oh shit, I got to do the podcast. When the fuck am I going to find the time to do the podcast? When am I going to find time in the podcast when I feel like shit? And, and I, I literally can't, I can't even stand in front of a microphone for more than 15 minutes. So I was down for the count. I was down for the count. My wife was like a little bit sick or whatever, but she didn't have it as bad as me and, and, my, and my kid. We had it the roughest. My thought is that when I was doing all that papa shit, cleaning up and doing all that shit, that's when I caught it. Some shit must have popped in somewhere I didn't even realize. I must have wiped an eyelid or some shit, some shit like that. I must have scratched my cheek or something and caught the shit. 
Yo, beware. These little fuckers are germ machines. They come in with that brand new, they come in with the 2023 diseases, y'all, in 2022, right? Pre-order your shit because they are coming with it and it's gonna take you out in ways my 1980s weak ass bones and, 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 and organs are not ready for this 2023 shit. I can't handle this. It's clear, it's evident. Yo, watch out. Watch out. If you hear people have sick kids, don't invite them over. Don't hang with them. Basically, exile those people from your fucking life because they are carriers. All right? It's like they are the zombie infection. You don't want to be around when the zombie infection pops off. You don't want to be in the circumference of the biters, of the walkers. Okay? So treat your people with kids like that. As soon as you hear somebody's sick, eh. Rick Grimes, them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Brother Marcus from, from the fucking uh, State of Decay games. Keep them motherfuckers way the fuck over there. Build up your defenses and keep them out. All right? These kids are like zombies. And they spread shit. Mad easy. Mad fucking easy. Whew. I just have to get that off my chest. You know what I'm saying? I want y'all to understand the, 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 the plight that I have been through in the last few days leading up to this podcast but we made it we're here greasy says season two let's go as always you can find me on social media go follow me on tiktok instagram or facebook under greasy says that's g-r-e-a-s-y-s-a-y-s or mq on spotify bandcamp soundcloud that's m dash c-u-e or m underscore c-u-e on twitter Okay, I got to go take a break because all that yelling took it out of me. <laughs> uh, I'm still recovering. So let's pick a key and then we'll jump back into discussions. It's not going to be a lot of segments on this episode because I got a lot to catch up on. I got a lot of thoughts. So I'm going to go lay down for a second and then we'll pick a key. Today's key is brought to you by Jeremy. Today's key is brought to you by Jeremy. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. Who's shuffling? Moving like a leg that they forgot to put the muscle in. All right, all right, all right. Who want easy bread? Ain't no such thing unless you heard what Greasy said. Remember, you can reach out to me on social media. That's Greasy Says on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. And request whatever key you want me to do to show in, just like Jeremy did. Thanks, homie. I got you. Said he got you. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about what's been going on in the news. Woo! There's been non-stop shit in the news, y'all. Let's get the big one off the bat right now. I know y'all probably been waiting for me to talk about this shit. Act Blizzy. The Act Blizzy saga continues. It takes a fucking right turn. I wasn't expecting this shit. Microsoft turns around and makes a bid for Act Blizzy for 60, 60, damn near 66 bajillion dollars, man. A bu- Yo, probably the biggest deal ever made in games, right? I don't know of another one. I got to look it up. Let me look it up real quick. Hold up. Yeah, yo, I'm looking at it right here, right here. The, the Microsoft acquisition is 68.7 billion. Before that, Take Two bought Zynga for... Why the fuck did Take Two buy Zynga? Anyway, they bought Zynga in the same year. Apparently, that went under the radar. I didn't even pick up on that one for 12, 12.7 billion. Before that, Tencent bought Supercell, 81% of Supercell, in 2016 for 8.6 billion. This is, this is orders of magnitude. Microsoft bought Zen, Zenimax Media, which I believe is the owners of Bethesda, if I'm not mistaken, in 2020. For 8.1. You know what I'm saying? This is a this is a monumental acquisition. We have never seen this much money pass in, a, in an acquisition in gaming before. This is crazy. And basically, Microsoft bought the devil. They bought the devil. I didn't know you could do that. Who needs a deal with the devil if you can just buy him off? Buy him off. Yeah, who needs a deal with the devil if you can just pay his way home? Yo, Act Blizzy been going through all this legal shit 
all these troubles, all of this fucking toxic fucking behavior, Microsoft swoops in, buys the devil, and now does all of that shit go away? I'm asking y'all. Reach out to me. Greasy says TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, Twitter. Hit me up. M underscore CUE on Twitter. And let me know if you think because Microsoft acquired Act Blizzy that all of these problems are just going to get swept away. Personally, I think they might, right? You might think, oh, you know, they still got all the people that work there that are still disgruntled and still want to raise hell about Activision acting like a bunch of fucking assholes, right? Bobby Kotick being a, 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 a megalomaniac, right? But think about it. The whole structure has changed. Now, he's not the CEO. He ain't the top dog. Now he reports to somebody else. Now, if you have a problem, this is essentially an HR problem. Who do you talk to? You don't talk to the HR people at Activision anymore. They just bump it right up to the next level. The Microsoft people. Now it's going to take 50 times as long to get recognition for the problems that you had at old Act Blizzy. Right? That's one problem. Second problem Everybody at Act Blizzy, who is now being run by Microsoft, every employee, now they want to make a good impression. Now they want to look good in the eyes of Microsoft. So that might actually boil this thing down a little bit. It might actually simmer the, the pot a little bit. Because cats are like, oh, now we have to be a little more careful about our job security. We don't want to, we don't want to make the waters too rough. Because we don't want to look bad in the eyes of our Microsoft overlords. Right? Maybe. May, uh, number three. Maybe Microsoft is coming through and they hit everybody in the organization with, here is how we want to run this company. And they give them a little bit of ray of hope. Like we are about inclusivity and, and expression and all the things that people think are important that corporations all of a sudden have latched onto and are able to exploit to get their workers, their employees to, to fucking submit, basically, to their will. So now you're dealing with a whole different ethos. You're dealing with a whole different approach to, to the studio because now you're dealing with Microsoft. Very, very slick fucking move because Bobby Kotick had to be involved in that, in that acquisition. He had to sign some fucking papers. He had to make that deal. He had to help make that deal. You really think... They weren't fucking stalling on that on the, all of the Act Blizzy fucking drama and all the toxic culture and all, all of the, the lawsuits and this and that and the other. You don't think they were stalling that whole time just to sign this fucking Microsoft deal? I bet you your fucking front left toe. Your front left toe? Crazy? Really? Yes. Your front left toe. Not your back one. I bet you your front left toe that they stalled the whole time knowing that this deal was in the bag. Because they knew once this deal would sign, it would shake up things enough that a lot of these problems would go away. I would love to be wrong, y'all. I would love that. Please, prove me wrong, workers at ActBlizzy, now Microsoft. But I think it's going to be harder to get your voice heard because this is a mega, jega, kabeg, schmegma company. You know what I'm saying? Bigger than fucking life. They just paid, they basically paid for that lawsuit with 68 billion fucking dollars. Bravo. You fucking Uh-oh. Man, that was slick. I I mean I got to hand it to him. I got to hand it to him. But it also brings me up brings up another I uh another point I've been thinking about recently. I think in the gaming industry right now, we're going through another phase of the great consolidation. Making games is not always profitable. Most of the time, it's not profitable. Most of the time, game companies are losing money on every single release. And every time they try to develop a game, it gets more and more expensive. Marketing is fucking through the roof, right? You, if you want to market a game, you should expect to spend at, at least as much or double what your development costs are on marketing alone if you want your game to sell more than five fucking copies. Games are crazy expensive to make now. 
and game companies, they just can't exist in the same way they could 10 years ago, even five years ago. You have to make a blockbuster or you have to make a super niche game with like two people that, that somehow hits the fucking moonshot and you make a bajillion dollars, you and your boy, you and your homie in your garage, okay? That's the only way to make real money now. So the great consolidation is these mega, mega, mega fucking companies like Microsoft consolidating, scooping up all the competition, scooping up the smaller developers to develop for them so that they can become bigger and more powerful. It's happened before, right? We're talking about Take-Two by Zynga. Remember when Zynga was the hot shit in mobile gamings? Does anyone even fucking care about what Zynga's doing now? Nope. I do. But Zynga made a fucking shit ton of money back in probably what, early 2000s? Mid 2000s, maybe? Made a ton of money in mobile games on a level that, that Tense Take Two definitely wasn't making money on that level in mobile. But Take Two realizes there's an opportunity here. So they, they acquire this company that's making gangbuster games. It's happened many, many times. Mojang bought by Microsoft, right? They paid off sad boy, uh, what's his name? The fuck is his name again? Yeah. Minecraft was making a, a bunch of money. Microsoft swoops in and they pay notch however many billion dollars. Scoop up the small guy, take the game to the next level. Boom, he eliminated your competition. The great consolidation. It's happening again. It's happening again. Wait, I wonder who's going to... I mean, Square Enix? That's another one. Remember? Square Enix. Both companies were basically slowly failing. And their games were becoming more and more expensive. I mean, after Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, IX, X, XI, right? Holy shit. XII, all that. Thirteen. These things are, 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 are monolith games that cost... Millions upon millions and years and years and tons of developers to make. A one single studio can't do that shit anymore. So you either merge or you get acquired. And you join the great fucking video game developer in the sky. Sooner or later, there's going to be like two or three that are going to exist. And eventually, one of them is going to eat the other one. That's just how it goes. That's just how it goes. I don't know what the end game is, though is the end game that there's just one big developer. They're like Microni, uh, Microni Soft or something. You know what I mean? Like who, what is the, what is the big mega developer of the future? You know, who's that going to be? Who, tell me, reach out to me uh, on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or M underscore CUE on Twitter. And tell me who is going to be the last publisher standing. Is it going to be Take-Two? Is it going to be Microsoft? Is it going to be Nintendo? Who's going to, who's going to buy Nintendo? Mm. Maybe. That's the real question. Who's going to buy Nintendo? And who's going to own Smash Bros? Who's going to buy Nintendo? When the day comes, who's going to buy Nintendo? I know. I know. You Nintendo fanboys and fangirls are out there yelling at me right now. Yelling at me. It's never going to happen, man. It's never going to happen. But wait. Just fucking wait. Remember? Remember when Sega and Nintendo making a game together never seemed like it could fucking happen? Mm. Mm-hmm. Remember when you never thought a uh, fucking Master Chief would show up in a fucking... Smash Brothers game? Huh? It can yeah. still happen. Yeah. 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 You remember when you thought Zelda would never end up... Sorry, Link would never end up in a fucking Soul Calibur game? There we are. So, who do you think is going to buy Nintendo? Let me see if I got a prediction for you. Microsoft. Microsoft. Microsoft is going to buy Nintendo. Because Google, as rich as they are... They suck at games. Stadia failed. They fucking suck at games, right? They're not going to fuck with that anymore. They're done. They're done. They're not going to try again. They, they, they 
They put a bunch of money on the table. They tried. They failed. The shit was a disaster, right? So, so now it ain't going to be Google. It ain't going to be Apple because Apple failed. They tried with the Apple TV and making games for that piece of shit. And that shit failed. So it ain't going to be Apple. So there's only one left. And that's Microsoft. Unless somebody coming out, maybe it's Tencent. Maybe Tencent is the last one standing. Somebody out of Asia. You know what I'm saying? But yo, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time, y'all. I'm sorry to say. Sorry, Nintendo fan people. It's gonna happen. You heard it here first on Greasy Says Season 2, Episode 1. <laughs> Reflection. 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 Y'all watch a lot of horror movies? Y'all like zombie movies? I love zombie movies. It might be one of my favorite genres of horror movies. For real. And I got to thinking with all of this, with me, basically with me being sick like a fucking zombie, and my kids spreading the plague like a fucking zombie, and, and the great consolidation of all of these big companies eating up all these little companies made me think of zombies. And I started thinking like, yo, the best zombie movies, who makes the best zombie movies these, ga- these days? And who makes the best zombie games these, ga- these days? Boom. All right. I've been watching All of Us Are Dead, which I don't know how faithful a translation is that is from Korean to English. But it's uh, this new Korean horror series on Netflix. It's, it's awesome. It's about a high school uh, zombie infestation. Shit goes wild. It has incredible single shot uh, scenes where they they shoot this, you know, crazy uh, chaotic scene with like 50 to 100 people all running around being all crazy zombies, people eating people and people screaming, running, climbing up on desks and and jumping out windows all within a single shot. Children of men style, you know what I'm saying? And I just keep thinking like Koreans make the best zombie movies. All right, for a couple of reasons, right? One, their direction of chaos is incredible. Like, when you watch a Korean zombie movie or zombie series, you feel a lot of angst. Like, I haven't felt, like, stress while watching a series about zombies since, like, back in, like, 28 days later. Like, Koreans have mastered the speed zombie. Speed zombies, right, are zombies that don't go, like, slowly towards you that take forever. You know, the zombies that are in Resident Evil or that are in the the Romero movies. Slow-ass zombies. You you push them over with your foot and you keep on moving. You know what I mean? You throw a fucking cup at them and they're gone. You know what I mean? Walking dead, same shit. These zombies ain't scary, dog. But the Korean zombies, all right, the zombies that are in uh, uh, All of Us Are Dead... And Train to Busan, which is a goddamn classic. You gotta have your cardio up to get away from fucking these zombies. You know what I'm saying? These zombies will run your ass down. I love speed zombies. Because you know what? You ain't gonna make it if you if your cardio ain't up in a speed zombie movie. If you kind of chunky, or you ain't really been on the treadmill, you ain't riding your Peloton, your ass is gonna be a hamburger in a Korean zombie movie, in a speed zombie movie. And secondly, or thirdly, I don't know where I'm at, but Korean actors and actresses are so good at being speed zombies. The way they contort their bodies, the the way they get up from, from being transformed into a zombie where their bones are cracking and they do this contortionist stuff. And then they like, they use like the old school Kung Fu string stuff to like pull their body up. It looks very unnatural, very unnerving, but it's so powerful in a zombie movie that Western zombie movies have not even come close to achieving that. Like, you look at World War Z, and even their CG looks fucking weak as fuck compared to to some of the practical stuff that these Korean zombie movies are doing. So I I, I think Korea is at the pinnacle of zombie movies. They make the best zombie movies and best zombie series hands down if you haven't watched train to busan do yourself a favor and go watch that shit immediately 
and then go watch Snowpiercer because that's an original. I think that's an originally a uh, Korean uh, script as well. Not the new series, but the, the, the westernized, bastardized movie of Snowpiercer. So it got me thinking, where are the, the amazing Korean zombie video games? Right? I don't know of any. Do you know of any? I don't know. If I think uh, zombie games, I'm thinking Resident Evil, which is Capcom, which is Japan and America, I guess. Uh, I'm thinking what? Dying Light, which to me is a fucking amazing game. Uh, that's, I think that's uh, European. The developers of that are European. Am I right? I don't know. I'm not going to check. But Dying Light's an amazing zombie uh, game. Um, what else is there? House of the Dead back in the day from Sega. That's Japanese. Um, oh, Last of Us, which was balls. I don't give a fuck what you say. That shit was bollocks. Public service announcement. He actually means day is gone. So please, don't stab us in a dark alley. Thank you. That had some speed zombies in it. But they, it, it didn't have the same feel as, as, a, as a Korean zombie movie. I'm like, yo, who's, where, who's the studio that's going to give us, what's the Korean studio that's going to give us the ultimate zombie game, the ultimate speed zombie game? Oh, I forgot about Last of Us. Yeah, Last of Us has some killer zombies in it. So, yeah, okay, maybe they are the highest level of zombie game at this point. And we're back. Then I started thinking about, you know, who are the big Korean game developers or publishers, stuff like that. So I, I, I started running down the list, right? I got some right here. We got NCSoft, mega giant, enormous publisher. Uh, but, you know, they make mostly MMORPGs. That's what they do. Those are really big in Asia, so they make a bunch of them. But ain't nobody making no zombie game over there, right? I don't see anything listed here that even comes close to that. So that's probably the... NCSoft is probably the biggest Korean developer. And then there's Crafton. I guess the next biggest, uh, and they made PUBG, right? Which is a fucking, again, massively multiplayer shooting game, a battle royale game, right? So it's all these kind of, you know, massively multiplayer games. But massively multiplayer games is the perfect arena for a fucking speed zombie game. Where's my goddamn speed zombie game uh, crafting? NC Soft, you know what I'm saying? What's going on over there? I hope, I hope that one of these developers decides to go after a horror game and decides to make a zombie game because I will be the first in line. And I don't really play MMORPGs, right? I don't, I don't care for that stuff. But, I mean, I was willing to throw down on State of Decay multiplayer. So if you give me something that comes even close to that, surpasses that, you getting my money. I guarantee it. I'm forking you over them bills. So, if you, if you live in Korea, or you have some Korean friends who are working at these developers, plant the seed. Tell them Greasy sent you. We need a speed zombie game made in Korea. Please and thank you. Yeah. We got a listener comment. From Instagram, the homie New Luke. Not the old Luke, the new Luke. Talking about Act Blizzy. Uh, it's actually a post from somebody else uh, that says Activision Blizzard. March, they gave the CEO 200 million bonus, laid off 190 people. In December, they posted $639 million in profit and laid off 20 people. In the last three years, 1,000 plus people got laid off with $7 billion in profit. And now they cash out with $69 billion sale to Microsoft. I mean, shit, y'all. Say what you will about, you know... These serpents that be out here doing the business, doing the dirty, making all these deals, and just fucking over the little man. 
and cashing in on all you Call of Duty nuts out there. But they must be doing something right. These are the numbers they don't like. Damn, that's depressing. Thanks, New Luke, for depressing the fuck out of me. Appreciate it. Uh, in other news, y'all know that I did an interview on the Polygamer podcast with Ken Gagne, who was nice enough to have me on there to talk my shit. And I worked clean the entire time. I don't think I said one curse word in that fucking thing, which is amazing. You know what I mean? Yo, go over to Polygamer and listen to the podcast, polygamer.net. And go listen to me, Greasy, talk to the great Ken Gagne. Even like blasted some Twitter shit that was really nice. You know what I'm saying? Saying stuff like sound designer, level designer, voice actor, mocap actor, and now podcast host MQ. That's what he, he tagged me on Twitter. That's why it's like that. Just wrapped season one of Greasy Says, a show about his 15 year career as a brown game developer. And I asked him what to expect from season two. Among other things, he asked me. He asked me a lot of good questions. Fantastic interviewer. I mean, bomb questions. Very prepared, very professional. And is kind of a G on the Twitter marketing. You know what I'm saying? On marketing his podcast. So respect to Ken. Respect to the Polygamer podcast. And I appreciate you for listening to me talk. And all the people who came over. I want to send some greasy people over to him. And spread the love. And listen to to what they got going on over there. Because they got some interesting uh, interviews and stuff going on over there. So thank you, Ken. Thank you, Polygamer. All right, let's wrap up the show as we always do with a little bit of... Medicate and meditate. It's time once again to practice our gratitude. And this week, I got lots of gratitude, yo. Yeah. Got gratitude. For sick days. Taking time off to heal. I know a lot of people out there don't get that blessing. But I do. And I'm grateful, I'm grateful. Yeah, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. Yeah. I'm grateful for being able to drink beverages. I've never in my life been so happy to drink water in my life. Just to taste shit again. Just to get fluid down my fucking gullet and not die. Now I know how people trapped in the desert feel. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for water. I'm also grateful for the ER. And the doctors and nurses that work there And the popsicles they got on deck Cause even after all the shit I was talking Yo, I was worried for my son, yo, no lie So I'm grateful for y'all I'm also grateful for saltine crackers Yeah, it's the salt Teen crackers That salty, that crunchy, that Fill you up and not make you sick That salty, that cracker Yeah And finally I'm grateful for zombie movies And zombies in general Because when the zombie invasion happens I got my cardio up the rest of y'all gonna be fucked. Yo, for real, y'all better get up on that cardio. It's good for your health, and it's, and it's good for escaping shit. I'm running away from zombies. It's coming, y'all. Y'all think y'all thought pandemics couldn't happen. Y'all thought 2020 was gonna be fucking a bed of roses. We were all fucking wrong. So you know what? You never know when the zombie apocalypse might be coming around. Yo, that shit might be coming in 2023. This might have been a precursor. You know what I'm saying? Omicron might just be the start. Who knows? So stay on your toes. Stay on your toes. Get that heart rate up, y'all. Take care of yourselves. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, 
It's been another episode of Greasy Says. Uh, season two, episode one is over. I'm so happy I made it. I had to take lots of breaks, but you know what? We did it. We did it. We're back. And I hope y'all rocking with me this season once again. Tell all your friends about Greasy Says, all right? Y'all can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook under Greasy Says. And y'all can find me on SoundCloud, Bandcamp, uh, under MQ, and on Spotify if you want to check out my music. Support, support. Let me get them streams up. And if you want to hit me on Twitter, it's M underscore C-U-E. All right? So spread the word. Spread it like that virus. Spread it like the norovirus. Hopefully y'all don't catch the shit I caught. Uh, if you have kids... You know what I mean? Wear masks around them. They ain't gonna recognize you, but that's cool. They're gonna be weirded out. They probably gonna have fucked up memories, but that's cool. You gonna be all right because you have to raise these little guys and gals. And even though we love them, they trying to kill us. So, greasy people ho! Thanks for coming out. Like, subscribe, comment, give me feedback. Tell me to go fuck myself. And until next time, it's me, Greasy, and I'm checking out with the room key. Latest.